Mary is a clever and happy girl. She lives with her family in a lovely little... Babe! Seriously? Enough now. What you have just seen is a very angry wife. Now over the years I've worked on a lot of projects, but there's one that has single-handedly managed to irritate my wife in ways I could have never predicted. And come to think of it, I've actually grown quite fond of this project and I wanted to share it with you guys. So imagine you're in a job interview and somebody asks you, what are your weaknesses? Now there are a lot of things you can say, uh, but some of them are not quite good. So number one, you could tell them something that you think they want to hear, like, I work too hard, I don't know when to stop. Ugh, that's not a good answer. Uh, they see right through it. Another thing you could say is say something that, you know, there's no coming back from what you just said. Like, oh, I like to steal company supplies or I slack off when no one's watching. You know, <laughs> like don't say things like that. Often what you want to say is something that is a weakness, a genuine weakness that you have, followed by how do you work towards fixing that or counteracting your weakness? So I'm gonna give you an example of something I say and hopefully this will help you. I'm constantly late to meetings, like consistently. Uh, I'm working and I'm focusing or, and I just lose track of time. And then people have to ping me on Slack, hey, are you joining? And it's disrespectful, right? It's disrespectful to the time. So one day I decided, you know, this can't keep happening. I have to work on this. And I started using uh, if this then that or IFTTT to monitor my calendar and fire alarms. Uh, this was good, but it wasn't quite what I needed. Like I needed to fine tune it just a little bit and I couldn't do it. So I ended up writing something in Go, which basically does a few things. There's a listener that's watching my calendar and firing off signals whenever an event is about to start. Then I have some sort of like listeners monitoring that channel. And uh, whenever an event is about to start, they fire off alarms. There's one that, for instance, will phone me on Twilio. There's one that uh, will pop a notification in my MacBook. And if I click it, I join the event. Or if I ignore it, it will reply to the invite saying I'm not joining. There is one that makes the entire lights of the house go red. And... Uh, that's the one that you saw in the beginning that my wife hates. So I'm going to make one video for each kind of listener. So one video we're going to integrate with Twilio with Go and fire phone calls. In another video, we're going to do the notification thing, which is very useful because uh, I don't have to open Google Calendar or anything. I just click on the notification and the Zoom or the Google Meet will open up. And yeah, if you're interested in messing around with devices, I'm thinking that uh, the one that my wife hates, the one with the uh, lights going red, the reason she hates it is because she thinks that she feels like the whole house is like this submarine with all the lights going red. So I'm thinking for a bonus video, we're going to connect to Google Chromecast and play submarine sounds uh, when the lights go red. So uh, yeah, let's see what she thinks about that. So if you are interested, let's get started. All right, so before we start, if you're a JavaScript developer and you don't know Go, I'm gonna take a couple of, like a minute or two to explain a few things about the syntax. But if you're a Go developer, you can just skip to the next chapter. So you'll see a lot of this colon assignment thing and you're probably wondering what it, what it is. Uh, so in JavaScript, we do something like var h equals eight, and then we can print h, right? Um, but in Go, you can, so we're declaring the variable and we're initializing it. And if you want to do those both things in a single line, you can just do h colon equals h colon equals eight. And what this will do is it will declare the variable and initialize it with eight. So whenever we have a, we're using a new variable that doesn't show up before, you can declare it with colon and then assign it to whatever. So that's what you're seeing here. Uh, you're seeing, uh, I'm calling this function. And another thing is Go doesn't have exceptions. Uh, I mean, you can panic, but the way to do things in Go is you can return more than one thing, right? So you can return a service and an error. And so this function returns both. And then we check for the error. And if it's not nil, this is the null equivalent in JavaScript, we can panic. 
And the last thing I'm gonna talk about is the concept of channels. I'm gonna mention that in this, in this video. And basically the idea is this. A channel is like a stream in Node, right? Or, or an observable. They're not the same thing. Like I'm super oversimplifying here. It's just I wanna bring that sort of uh, way of thinking to your mind. And basically a channel will emit values over time. So you create a channel, you push things on one end, and on the other end, someone will be trying to pull those things that you push. So that's all you need to know about Go for this video. Um, and I'm gonna cover the rest as I go. We start from the fact that I have this service that can retrieve my events. So I can do something like response, uh, the underscore means I don't care about this, so I don't care about the error. Uh, and I can do calendar service. Uh, I want to go to the event and I want to list my primary calendar and then do. And this will execute the query. And then I can uh, iterate over uh, those events with uh, four. And when you range over a collection means you are doing like a four off loop. Okay, in JavaScript. And the first value is the counter, like the index. And the second value is the actual element, so the event. So then I can do, I want to print uh, whatever. And I want, what do we want to print? We want to print the, the summary or the title of the event. If we execute this, uh, I'm gonna show it to you just now. It'll take a little bit. Okay, so these are all my events here. I just probably will only care about like this week's events, right? So for that, I wrote this little function here that receives the calendar service, calculates now, adds 24 hours times seven, so adds seven days to now, and then it will call the same function you see above with the minimum time and the maximum time. Okay, so, and then it'll return the items, which is the, are the events. So if we do that, uh, get next week events, I'm gonna pass in the calendar service, and this will return uh, this will return the events, right? So let's rename this to events. So let's run this now, and this is my calendar. Oops, this is my calendar. So you see, I have a testing event and another whole day event here, which you will see now. You will see the testing event and uh, yeah. Uh, so okay, now we have this week's event. So what do we have to do next? Well, we have to find a way to find out when they are about to start. So ideally, we would create a channel that emits at the event that is about to start. So I have this channel here and every time an event, a calendar event is about to start, it will be signaled in this channel. So let's say that this is events starting and then we do some magic here i'm gonna fill in that now and then we can imagine that this is a is a channel that emits every time an event is about to start so you could say for each for each event that is emitted in event starting uh, i want to maybe phone call me uh, maybe make phone call i can uh, post lights and I can um, push notification. So this will run every time I need, every time an event is about to start because this channel, this is not a channel yet, right? But it'll, it will be. This channel emits a value every time an event is about to start. Let's do that. Let's say that we want to create a, a function that says that is called notify event starting that receives the list of events that I just fetched uh, maybe to notify me 30 seconds before they start. And yeah, let's do that. Oh, and um, what if I receive an event that has already started? Should I skip it or should I fire it right immediately here? So for now, let's, this is a third argument. Let's say true, we should skip it. And we're gonna implement this in, uh, in, a, in a different module. So calendar alarms module. And then we're gonna call this function. This function is gonna take an array of events and uh, how long before the event we must fire the alarm. And it'll push to this channel here. It'll push to this channel and we are gonna iterate over this channel. Oops, I missed the range keyword here. Uh, we're gonna, every time some, an event's about to start, we, we enter this body here, okay? The problem is that this is an array, right? But, 
and that I'm only retrieving these events once. Uh, but I need to do this periodically. So in a future version, we're gonna use the push notification API uh, so that we get real time updates. But for now, we can just constantly query the, the endpoints. So Go has a way of doing that. There's time dot tick and you say every five minutes and this is a channel that will emit every five minutes right so you could do uh, for range uh, yeah you could do something like this and now whatever is in this body whatever is inside here will run every five minutes okay well not quite I'll, I'll explain just now so we want to do this query every five minutes so what is our problem? Our problem is that uh, this runs every five minutes and I get a new list of events, but I wanna call this function once because I already have this channel that will emit, right? So events here, if, if you think about it, this shouldn't be an array because I need this function to constantly receive new events that are coming in. So this should be a channel and what notify event starting is gonna do I'm gonna just make this uppercase. What, what notify event starting is gonna do, it's gonna listen on this channel and every time a new event comes in, it will set an alarm and when the alarm fires, it will go to event starting here, okay? So, uh, so let's do that. Let's make a, let's change this to response. Let's make a, a events channel. And this is how you make a channel. You should say, I wanna create a channel of calendar.event. By the way, if you're in JavaScript, these are pointers, you can use values. Don't worry about it, just ignore this pointer here for now. Um, but it's pretty easy. So this is an events channel. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is now, I'm gonna range over uh, this items, and I'm going to be pushing to this events channel, each event, right? So this will return a list of events. I will iterate over that list of events and put them in this channel. And this guy is going to do the plumbing. So it's gonna connect this channel of events to events starting. So the magic happens in this line, okay? Um, but this is not quite going to work because the problem here is that this is going to block here. Like, this is not executing in a different thread, in a different execution context, right? So it's gonna be stuck in this for loop and this is gonna fire every five minutes and it's never gonna execute this line, right? So in Go, you have the concept of a Go routine. You know in JavaScript when you call an async function that you call it and it's like, it will execute and then the the line below will execute as well, like it doesn't block. Well, a Go routine is not, is similar to that, not quite, but you can basically say, you can call any function uh, and you prepend it with Go, you use the Go keyword, and it will kind of like, if this is your execution context and you call a function with, with Go, it'll sort of like execute them concurrently, not in parallel, like, uh, necessarily in parallel, but concurrently, right? Um, so we can create a function and then execute it immediately and then call this with go. And whatever we put inside this body will kind of run on its own little, you can think of it as a thread, it's not, but you can think of it that way. Okay, so I'm gonna move this here. So what's gonna happen is the, the it's gonna execute this line, then it's gonna come here and it's gonna execute this in, I don't wanna say in parallel, but concurrently, and then it's gonna execute this. And this is gonna be executing like on the side, okay? So, okay, so now what we have to do is implement this function here. And this video is turning out to be super long. So I'm gonna leave this for the next video. And we're gonna do a lot of things. Uh, we're gonna do actually, we're gonna break this down into a client and a server we're going to explore, you know, uh, WebSockets, gRPC. Um, we're gonna over-engineer the crap out of this. Yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video.